To start off a heart attack tour, there's no better way to do it than with Philippines' most famous food, lechon. Now, we're in La Loma Street in Quezon City. It's one of the most famous, oldest, longest stretches of like these lechon houses. So all these houses that cook lechon in the morning for everybody in Metro Manila. And we are headed to one of the most popular, Ryan's. All right, so at Ryan's, who is Ryan? Well, you can find him. He's kind of been running around. He's nice enough to give us access to check this all out. And you can see he's got another batch for us ready to go. So he's actually got a little gear system working here. Got a machine pulling in. It's got the pipe in the back rotating, which gets those gears rotating, which actually will get these little spits right here to circle and circle and circle. Luckily, no, I've seen people do it manually, handheld too. This is much more efficient, in my opinion. All right, you can see he's got two long bamboo sticks here. What he's gonna do is he's got one where he's gonna keep those coals, try to keep them even, but then he's got the mop. And I don't know what the mixture is he puts on the mop, but it looks oily and buttery and like it's trying to solidify, but then he's gonna put it all over those pigs. And once it drips in that fire, you can see that flame come up, you can see the smoke come up, all that flavor infusing into that pork. And nothing is wasted here in the Philippines. This is actually the lechon from the previous day that didn't sell. They've frozen it, they're gonna bring it out here, chop it, and they're gonna make a dish called lechon paxil, which is famous for using leftovers. It is leftover lechon dish. And then they take it, they stew it. It's the perfect dish for a party using leftovers. So you can see he's got two types here. He's got the bula clock, which actually translates to flour. So he got flour chicharron, but trust me, it's not a flour. I think this is like the webbing or sometimes like call fat or something from the inside of a pig. And then he's got the fried intestines here on the lip. Pituca, I think. Hold on. Ah, I said it right, pituca. It's a little bit spicy. A little spicy. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> Just want to cheers with you. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Wow. Delicious. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Up to the outside. Mm. Crunchy, creamy, yeah. salty, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> and here we have it. Filipino breakfast of champions. Now, I'm going to start with the bituca. Actually, that's going to be the fried intestine. So I'm going to get it right here. And it looks like he just gave it a little coating in salt. I kind of want to try it plain, but I think I am going to go dip in that vinegar. So a little dip in that coconut vinegar and chili. Ooh. Oh, that is potato chip I find. I mean, it's salty, it's crunchy, everything you want. It doesn't have any foul smell or anything to it, so they've cleaned it beautifully. And actually, it's that vinegar. I don't think this would be near as good if you didn't have that homemade coconut vinegar with the chili. And now let's go for a little bit of the Buddha clock, which is the specialty here. Still not quite sure what it would be in English, but that's okay. We'll just adapt and call it Buddha clock. Oh, oh, oh. Oh wow, that's where it's at. So you see this webbing, it's just got these ultra thin, almost crispy, translucent pieces. Not only that, but you do have a little bit of meat and fat, so you get this creamy melting component as well. That double texture, again, with that coconut vinegar and chili. Oh, oh. There's a reason he's been famous since 1982. I'm done, I don't wanna film anymore, I just wanna sit here and eat. All right, and we are going for lomi, a noodle dish known for its thick egg-like noodles. Now, there are different variations all throughout the Philippines, but we are going for a special Batonga-style lomi. Pretty much that means it's just a meat lover's lomi. So we're gonna get in here and have one of the best, the Andes out in Quezon City. Okay, so they do more than just lomi here. They got bulalo, they got sizzling plates, which I guess they got some like sit going on or something like that. They got pancit, they got all different types of things you can get here, but what I do, you gotta go for the thumbs up. Two options, the bulalo or the lomi. Or tapa. Tapa's also a thumb up. Hello. Nobody's home. Can I, can I get one super lomi big? 240, sir. 240, here you go. Uh-huh, Paul. Oh, that's definitely super. Thank you, Paul. Super big is an understatement here. Oh. I think it's bigger than my head. Right away, you smell all that fried garlic just wafting in the air from all the fans. So to be a Batangas Lomi, first thing you notice is that rich, deep, dark color. Not only that, a plethora of toppings. What all we got here? So we got actually some pork belly here, some chicharron on the side. You can already see that distinguished Batangas Lomi style already. Look at that gloopiness already. So we got kikiam here. But then we have another type. We have a Chinese kikiam, which we'll explain a little bit more later. Boiled eggs, fried garlic, and then fried lumpia. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more 
toppings and bits and meat lover pieces down in this as well. Oh, and I completely forgot about the noodles. There's so much meat and topping on here. I forgot about the noodles. Oh my gosh, those are yellow, huge, thick noodles. Okay. Yo. Y'all, these are the heaviest noodles. <laughs> it's incredibly dense. I think I got me a pretty good size plate dished up. I mean, you can see that thickness already. They're making it a gravy. And I mean, you can tell just how thick and heavy and rich this is. That Batanga style lomi is insane. See the little pieces of meat just throughout that gravy, using that meat sauce as well. I do believe thickening it up with that sweet potato starch. Mm. Is this supposed to be my spoon? I didn't get a spoon. How do you eat this? <laughs> I don't know how to eat it. I'm just gonna go like a pasta. All right, here we go. Batanga's lomi in Quezon City. Like I said, I don't usually like goopy textures, especially when it's been thickened with some type of just sweet potato starch or some type of ingredient like that. But this, I can handle because it is an on-salt of fried garlic. It's salty, it's meaty, it's thick. Honestly, my mind is blown. I did not think I would like this at all, but I can see myself craving this, eating this again, just not in this weather. Like I said, cold and rainy, yeah, I could definitely get some batangas lomi on a nice, cold, rainy day. So this is the kikiam, this is the Chinese kikiam. There's a couple different types. So you see with that tofu wrapped around it, pretty much it's gonna be pork, five spice powder, should have some jicama carrots, can have prawn in here. Oh, that goes well. That Chinese five spice powder, the saltiness really kicks through the heaviness and the meatiness of this Batangas lomi. Wow, so deep down in there, you could also get some little bits of pork liver, but me, I gotta get chicharron, I gotta go for one here on top. So I can get that ultimate crunchification. This is this is definitely time dependent. We're doing a little speed run here, a little gaming speed run. That's the last thing I need. I just need that crunchy, mm, salty, shattering crunch. Honestly, you know what? When you can take a dish, it looks like a four-year-old has a sinus infection and make it delicious. It's pretty impressive. If you don't want to travel three hours south to Batangas, come here to Quezon City. This next spot's all about the beef. That's right, we're going for pares here in the Philippines, but not any pares, legendary pares. We're here at Jim's. Been open since 1999, and is the spot when you get that craving for that beef. So everything's done at this counter. I have ordered here, I've got my food here, and I've already paid. But then you gotta take it down here and doctor it up. So this is kind of the doctor station. This is what you can do and add whatever you want. Always the, the national condiment of the Philippines, the calamansi and then they got some dried chili here as well. Now it's kind of an interesting restaurant because you got like these metal high tables. They are like slender and tall and you'll see not many people sit down. You maybe got some metal bars on the back of the wall you can go on, but it's really just for standing and eating at the same time. You don't get to sit much and definitely don't lean on the pitcher. So you can see right here, we got the beef potters. So you can get potters different ways. We get ours with the rice. You can get it with noodles. I've had this before in like a carinderia, but we also got it with that bone marrow right here. Perez is actually gonna be that beef that's been cooked asado style, so it's gonna be kind of low, slow, braised, and a sweet soy sauce. And you can see when she dishes up, she actually got the beef and the stock separate. So you're gonna take that beef and that stock that they rendered down and cooked all that beef in and add it back into it and bring it back together. But we gotta go for the main show right here. We got that bone marrow. Oh yeah, looking just like a little custard in there. Oh, a little slow. There it comes right there. Oh, here it comes. I would use a spoon, but the spoon doesn't fit. Give it a little spank. No, spank didn't work either. I guess we gotta go in the back way. Okay, in times like this, I only know of one way. Can I stick my darn finger up here? All right, let's get in here, get a few pieces of beef. Oh, that is tender. Gotta watch out for those bones though. Still got plenty of pieces of meat in here. A little calamansi. And then how I like it, just a little bit of chili here. Oh yeah, get that little bone marrow piece right there. And that's what you want. We got the beef, we got the bone marrow, and the rice all dressed up. Wow. And it's bites like that that you finally understand why this place has the name Legendary Pares. I mean, that is perfectly done. I love it with the bone marrow because it's just like this soft, creamy butter you can spread over that rice, but then you get with that beef. 
slow cooked and that sweet soy sauce. So really that sweetness, that fat, tender, fall apart, beef all around the bone. Oh, it's just like a yin and yang. It goes together perfectly. Hmm. But I think you gotta use that rice. Get some of that beef stock, that stew all over that rice there. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's what you want. Now here's the thing it's kind of like about here. You clean your hands, you got the little paper towel roll here. Hanging all the way from the ceiling. And you're gonna need this. It's one of those meals where you gotta get in there, dig in, and get dirty with it, but it's worth it. French fries, that's right. I have never seen a cart that just purely does french fries. I guess you could say, he's a man after my heart. <laughs> get it, heart attack video, but I love french fry. Now you can see it's pretty simple how he does. He's got small, medium, large, but he didn't stop there. He's like, you know what, let's keep up selling people. I gotta sell as many french fries as I can to make a profit. So he went extra large. He's like, what's another big word? Jumbo. And he's like, what's better than jumbo? Special. And then he's got family size. Hello, can I do one small? What flavors do What flavors do you have? Uh, cheese barbecue, sour cream, and they also have salt. Can I do, can I do sour cream? Is this ketchup? Uh, salt well. Oh, salt only. Okay, let me do sour cream then. No ketchup here. Oh, thank you. And then you just shake. Yes, sir. Oh. It came out of the bag. Oh, I got sour cream powder all in my eye. Here we go. Oh. It's okay. You just keep. Uh, it's okay. I don't. I don't. I don't like the coins. It's for you. <laughs> and I love French fries. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, let's give you sour cream. Good try. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. You too. I like I like the serving size of the small. Sometimes I just need a few handfuls, and since I have no like discipline to stop eating French fries, I like that I can just get a small right here. And look at that! That bag got all those love marks in my life. When you pull it out, thoroughly seasoned. We not in white people territory anymore. We in Asia, where we like seasoning and we like flavor. Ooh. Just like a Lay's sour cream and onion chip, except it's got a little bit of sugar on it. I've never had that much sugar with a french fry before, but I don't hate it. Nice shoestring style, kind of like a McDonald's style. Not too crispy, but not underdone either. It's actually kind of ingenious. I mean, people are just rolling, crushing the french fries. I mean, he's sold probably like 10 or so bags since I've just been standing here trying to finish mine. To me, he's got the perfect cut. I love that he has lots of flavors. You can get small portions, so you could go in here, get three or four flavors easily. He talked me into barbecue, so barbecue is actually his favorite. And I do love me some barbecue anyway, so I had to give his favorite a try there. It wasn't hard, he didn't have to twist my arm or anything. Mmm. Oh, that's gonna be the thing today that broke my heart. Not all the food. I don't know if he went to like a Lay's flavoring company or what, but this tastes just like Lay's barbecue potato chips. But I like it better because I like this fries. Ooh. Sugar, sweet, honey, molasses. Can't go wrong with that. And we're at the last and final spot for today. Now I'm being from the South and right here, even this fry food surprised me. We're at Pepe Thons and we're gonna show you that you can fry anything and make it delicious. You're gonna wanna check this one out. All right, so we are getting special access. We're actually gonna get back into the kitchen and see how they prepare this specialty. Hey boss. So you can see it, this is not fried chicken. We're going for a couple of mooks. It's actually gonna be the pig face that's fried. So they've already got to pre-fry it right here and they got ready to go for all night and he's just heated up his oil. So we're gonna double fried pig face. Oh, and you can see what he's gonna do right here is he's gonna score that pig's face. So he's gonna create these slits. So you make sure you get more opening, more surface area, which is gonna be a more intensified crunch. Oh, and here it goes. We're going into that hot oil. You can see it smoking. Oh, I did not think I was going to get kitchen access. I do not have the footwear for this. I'm not getting anywhere near that walk. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see that. It's starting to bubble up and pop up from that oil, that hot oil on that fat of that skin. And that was only five minutes. So now what he's gonna do, he's gonna slice it, create even deeper grooves. Now he's got it cooked a little bit, a little bit more tender. He can get it down in here. And then before it's served, we're gonna get it another fried. And you can see he's actually got that soft now. He's prying open that mouth joint, trying to get that knife in there deeper and deeper. Make sure we can get this nice and crispy all throughout it. 
Oh, here we go. Back into the fryer. Oh yeah, you love to hear that sound right there. You can see he's just using that knife, just testing it, seeing how tender that is. He's gonna know when it's done, when it hits that perfect tenderness. All right, now not only did we get the couple mooks, which you can see right here, you can see the way he's fried it and the way it's opened and opened and opened. You can see you can almost just pull out these almost, looks like little pork belly pieces. You can just pull these off and I bet you that's gonna be extra crispy and delicious. But my mouth is hurting. So much salt, so much fat. I needed something sour, so I got the Senegal Bulao, which was kind of a dumb order by me, because Bulao is gonna be these huge bone pieces, so you're gonna get all those fatty, rich, tin and cartilage pieces around the bone of the beef. But no matter what, the broth's gonna be sour, plenty of vegetables, green chili, something to just wake my palate up right now. Oh, 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 oh. you love to hear that sound right there. So I think you can just pull this out. Oh, look at all that fat pulling apart down here. I think that's the piece right there. I think that may be the money bite. First one. Now it'd be a shame not to eat this with rice, not to get some vinegar, get some calamansi or anything on it, but I just want to do a nice little purity piece. I want to pay my respects. Look at that. That meat's going to be from that jowl as well. If you've ever had grilled pork jowl, it's one of the best pieces of the pork you can get. It's gonna blow some minds, but if you were all about the fat, the melt in your mouth, that is better than pork belly. We love ribs, we love pork belly. I don't know why you wouldn't enjoy this. But it definitely needs some rice, it needs some calamansi, so we need to give it some love, it needs some, it needs some family members and some things that go with it. Now that may have been the money bite right off, you know, the money bite, what you come in, you pay money for, makes a dish worth it, but to me, Filipino food is nothing without getting a little condiment on the side here. I do believe that's black vinegar. Got another type of vinegar here as well. Could have got some calamansi in there. I like it for the chili and the heat. You gotta do it the local way too. Go ahead and cut it right there. Just a little bit with that spoon. Now the beauty of this is we have these gorgeous, almost like fried looking pork belly pieces or roasted pork belly pieces that you can get. But then you almost got these little chicharron pieces as well coming from the front of the snout. So I think get all this right here. Some rice, a little drizzle there. And this is everything you want. If you are scared to try this, you have to change your way of thinking. You love Chinese roasted pork belly, then let me tell you what, you're missing out if you've not had this, because this to me may be even better. So I've eaten a lot of parts of the pig, but I never thought I would say this. That is some delicious nose. That is nose-tastic. That is, isn't it the nose? Oh, this is the nose part. Give me this piece. I'm just kind of curious. I've had many parts of pig, but I don't think I've ever had the snout. A little too fried. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna tell you something now. I'm gonna say something, it's gonna shock you all. My Filipino friend comes up to me, he's Max. You wanna go eat some lechon? You're gonna eat kapo mooks. I would pick kapo mooks over lechon. That's right. Pick yourself up off the floor. This may be one of the most underrated dishes in all of the Philippines. I think a lot of foreigners should be scared of it because it's actually pig face, but to me, if you don't try this, you've not truly experienced delicious food in the Philippines. Oh, oh, oh. And you're definitely gonna need to get something with it. So that's why I got the Senegong. I kind of did it wrong when I got the Bulao. Bulao is gonna be those rich pieces like I was talking about, that bone marrow, that fat. But I like Senegong because it's a nice, sour soup. You know in the Philippines, they love their acidity. And you can learn a lot from a culture through their food. Filipinos, Filipinas, they love their families. And this is a family portion if I've ever seen it. Get in there, look at all that beef, that tendon. Oh, look at that right there. I tell you what, Filipinos know their meat. That's for dang sure. Let's get in here, serve us up a little bit. I will take the green chili because I'm selfish. Let's just try this broth here. Beautiful, it's earthy because you got all that daikon radish in there. You get a little shallot, a little garlic, white vinegar, green chili, and then all the other things, the tomato. You get the beef fat in there. It's just a beautiful soup. Must try when in the Philippines, Senegal.
another reason you want to order them together. Oh yeah, it is a heart attack video, so we're going for everything fatty. Look at this. You can't see it on that back side. Look at that tendon right there. That tendon from that joint. Oh my gosh, look at that wiggle. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is gonna be incredible. I usually can't eat pieces like this because they're just so much fat. It just, again, it's just beef butter. But again, when it's been sitting in that Senegal soup base, it's taken on that acidity, that green chili flavor, the robust tomatoes. That's pretty good too. <laughs> well, if the Filipino food doesn't kill me from a heart attack, and maybe the hospitality well, got dessert unordered just showed up on my table right here okay you can see we got the fried bananas yeah that's right we're going to keep the fried theme going i do believe this is just ice cream and we got what they call la here which is going to be the coconut kind of like a coconut curd so they're going to kind of toast it and cook it down with a few other ingredients i'm sure it's sugar packed and everything so i guess the best way is just go in with your hands and get a scoop of ice cream I'm right here filipino banana split this is filipino banana split now we have filipino ice cream sandwich. Oh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I love that lactic. I need like that crumbly texture. A little bit of coconut flavor, a little toasted coconut flavor, a little bitter, a little sweet from the sugar. I do love the bananas they're using because there's this little sour component. So sour, sweet. It's fried, of course. Super creamy. How could you go wrong with this? 